free BSD reviews, tutorials and gaming. What you see here is the latest desktop with a few additions of the latest release of Project Trident 19.04 using Lumina 1.50. This is just going to be a quick overview. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much details. I'm going to keep that for next week when I release a, a video on uh, a full review of this operating system after I've used it exclusively for about three or four days to get a good feel of it. Like in the similar manner that I, similar to what I did when I reviewed Ghost BSD, I used that for uh, three or four days to get a good feel of the operating system. And I'll do that with this. I feel like you can't give a full review to something uh, that you either just use in the virtual box for half an hour or even just for one day. I think you need to use it exclusively uh, for three to four days to get a good, uh, a good notion of what the operating system is all about. But I can give you my first impressions um, of this. My first impressions are, well, I really do like Project Trident. I think it's a lot of potential. But there are one or two problems that immediately uh, presented themselves to me. One of them was I needed to install Simple Screen Recorder. Now, when I go onto the App Cafe, uh, all I get is the option for local. I don't get the option to uh, download from the internet. So there's no way that I can get Simple Screen Recorder um, installed. In fact, I'm just going to search for um, CMonkey, which is my favorite browser. I've got Firefox installed, but I'll have a look. See, no, no packages available, so it's, I need to access the online repositories, and I can't do that. So what I needed to do in order to get anything installed, really, was I had to go into uh, Control, Alt, and F2 into the virtual desktop, and then I did... Uh, a PKG install Xterm, because even Xterm wasn't installed by default. There was no default uh, terminal emulator installed on the desktop. So once that was installed, then I could just start one up and then PKG install uh, all the applications that you see on the right hand side of the screen. It's not a, a, a desirable way to be because it certainly isn't user friendly. Um, and I don't know why he's done it. But once Xterm was installed, then I could install Simple Screen Recorder, I could install Firefox, Audacity, uh, all the rest, and open um, LibreOffice. Well, that really wasn't the most um, perfect of starts, really. But that's fine. You know, little I idiosyncrasies you can you can li you can live with. Um, the rest, well, I'll give you a rundown. When you actually just install the system, there wasn't a great deal uh, installed. As you see, I have no favorites there. So if I just browse applications, um, you can list them all, as in previous releases, list them all in one go, if you wish. Um, or you can just, you know, if you want to show categories to smooth it up a bit. Um, when I first installed, there was no network option. Obviously, there was no Firefox. And very little of anything else. Uh, but you do get uh, the Lumina text editor was installed and Qt5 Assistant. Uh, education, that wasn't in before. It only appeared after I installed uh, LibreOffice. Graphics, again, LibreOffice Draw. But you did get Lumina PDF Viewer and Lumina Screenshot. Uh, multimedia, Audacity is in, you know, wasn't there before. Lumina Media Player, and uh, that was it. You just, <laughs> yeah, you just had Lumina Media Player in your multimedia. That was it. There was nothing else. Uh, network wasn't. Office, uh, you only had calculator. So pretty sparse, really. And for settings, these are pretty much, yeah, these are pretty much as they were. One thing that does look new to me is the Update Manager. Now, Update Manager looks new, and if it is new, it's a very good inclusion. Um, the layout has some design uh, flaws, really, which uh, it seems a bit odd, but, you know. So if there's any updates, there won't be any updates, because I only did that recently.
Mm, no updates available. There's a good rollback option, which is good, because the system uh, by default installs ZFS, so it gives you a, a, um, a really good rollback option in case you make a mistake or something doesn't quite go as to plan, which is often usually the case. So, there wasn't that much there. Let me go back to that. Settings, system. Uh, these were the default, except for Xterm, Lumina Desktop. As applications, yeah. You just got community support and desktop information and managed printing. Xterm wasn't in installed until I did so. And utility, you got more or less what you see here, you've got Compton, Insight, File Manager, Lumina Archiver, Lumina File Information, Lumina Search, Network Manager, System Admin Client, TrueOS Mixer Tray, uh, TrueOS Network Tray, and TrueOS Sys Admin. And that's it, it wasn't the right lot there. And it's strange, I when the install options came up, I selected um, things to be installed during installation, so I don't know why they didn't appear, or didn't appear to get installed. Very strange. I will do a full install tutorial uh, when I do the full review. Now, this is just a, uh, I, I, this is just a quick look to give you a quick rundown. Um, pretty much, uh, not a lot has changed since the previous release. Even though we're now into a new. Um, Development branch, I suppose, it really is in the 19 series. It seems to be business as usual, really. The quirks with the App Cafe is an irritating one. It's, I don't know what that problem is. I was looking online for similar problems, and you have them going all the way back to 2016. And so it's something which hasn't been fixed yet. Hmm. And there's no inclusion of a X term, which, uh, again, is odd. But, oh well. Let's have a look. The, the App Cafe is as it always is, really. It's still got the true OS um, branding. Also, another uh, interesting thing. If I maximize the window, the bottom segment, which is desktop utilities, audio, multimedia, and games are obscured by the taskbar, which is not a good thing. It's just little it's little things like that, which um, if if I was to recommend people to go to, through, uh, to uh, Project Trident, and if this is the first experience of Lumina, it would be unfortunate if they came away thinking negatively of it. Uh, through the one or two quirks that might present themselves. But, you know, every OS has got its problems, and I'm going to give it some slack until they bring out some updates. So maybe I should have really... Maybe I should have waited until update one or two, but I wanted to do a quick overview of uh, this new branch, so we'll see. Um, it's pretty much as it always is. Well, unfortunately, it seems to be locked into the uh, the local thing, and I don't know how to get it undone. Okie doke. Right. And we'll have a look at the Lumina theme. Uh, again, if you've seen previous videos of my uh, reviews of um, Project Trident, you'll know what these are. Nothing really has changed. It's pretty much... Oh, well, there seems to be less choice when it comes to icons. Uh, general styles, yeah, and desktop styles. Okay. Enable that one, enable that one, and enable that one. Okay. Hmm. So yeah, and desktop configuration. Again, it's all pretty. Um, it's pretty much as it was before. 
Sound theming, okay. That, might, that, that looks new. Window effects, yeah. See that? That's going to be overwhelming to uh, a new user. Actually, while I'm here, I'm going to we'll have a look at the what version LibreOffice is. I'm going to say I installed it, but I didn't check. Okay, do let's go down to about. Oh, that's not too bad. Six point two point three. I think that's the latest one. I'm not quite sure. Um, I think it is. Okay. Not bad at all. And let's go to the best channel on YouTube. Shall we? Yeah. There we go. Well, video plays straight away, so that's not a problem with uh, Codex. And even though you can't hear the sound, um, it's working fine. Very good. So yeah, very good that way. It's got the latest version of LibreOffice and sound works fine. Let's have a look at the memory. You might say what you see from there, but it's just using under 1.2 gigabytes. Now that's the reason because it's got ZFS going at the same time. My opinion of it is, well, I don't know. It seems like they've taken one step forward and uh, two steps back in terms of uh, user friendliness. It's it's weird because previously, in order preferences for BSDs, you know, FreeBSD based uh, OS, I would have I would have FreeBSD at the top, of course, and then I would have um, I would have had TrueOS, which then became Lumen, you know, Project Trident. Then I would have had Nomad. Then I would have had Ghost BSD. But given the fact that my review, not far off of Ghost BSD, given the fact that it wasn't that long ago since I reviewed Ghost BSD and I was really quite pleasantly surprised by it, I would say now it would be Free BSD at top, followed by Ghost BSD, then Nomad BSD. Although it really, that yeah, them two are pretty much tied. Um, Nomad BSD really surprised me about its its usability and the fact you can install it to hard drive. So a joint second, and uh, I would put at the moment Trident at uh, number three, which for me is an odd thing to be you know, to be saying. So I don't know. There's one or two glitches. Someone will hopefully write in the comment section how you fix the app cafe issue because I've I've looked online and I couldn't find anything. So I don't know what's going on with that. That's a big hurdle, if, in my opinion. Someone loads up uh, this OS, uh, they haven't got access, you know, it doesn't put in what they ask at the beginning title screen, you know, when you want uh, applications to be ready for when you launch. There's no browser, no terminal, no access to the app cafe because it won't let you install anything. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, this is just a quick overview. I will put out a full review uh, in about a week's time. You know, I like to uh, I like to take my time with that. I'll give it a full uh, going over. Some Linus security testing. I'll do the usual benchmarking and stuff like that. But for now, this will uh, this will do. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.